Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. It's all me, only me, giving you so much juicy scoop. I hope I can get to it all. So much has been going on. Let's get into it. Of course, first, I need to remind you about going to heathermcdonald.net for my tickets to all my new live shows. It's a juicy scoop, Heather McDonald experience. It's stand-up plus the your favorite parts of the Juicy Scoop podcast. You can bring your friends. You can be people... Bring people that don't know anything about pop culture or me, and I'm telling you, they will not be disappointed. You can also go alone and make a friend because we're all juicy scoopers and we're all cool. The next show up is Scottsdale, May 3rd with Brandy and Julie. So all the dates are there. Denver, Pachanga with Chris Frangiola in June, San Diego at Humphreys by the Bay. It's all there, heathermcdonald.net. Okay. Well, I'm sure you have heard the news that the Golden bachelor and his wife of three months that he chose on the show are getting a divorce. This was such an interesting thing. Um, People didn't think they should get married anyway. People thought that Jerry, which was pronounced Gary. No, it was Gary, but it was pronounced like Gary. I I don't know what his deal was. To give you a little bit background, he was married for 40 something years. His wife died suddenly of an infection And he just moved into his dream house, like in a town of 500 by the lake. That's where he was going to go with his wife. But when they chose him for The Bachelor, there's a lot that they presented that they found out later were not true. It was giving me, um, do you want to marry a millionaire kind of vibes when they, the first of these type of dating shows that came out many years ago, probably like 15, 17 years ago, where they found this guy and they said, oh, he's a rest, you know, he's a real estate person. He's worth a million dollars. I don't even know if he's worth a million dollars, but it was like he owned one house for like 250000 in San Diego. He was on public access doing goofy stand-up kind of material. Anyway, these people were blindfolded. One girl married him. She went on to be kind of famous. She was like a nurse in Thousand Oaks. I think she went on Playboy. That's when everyone did Playboy and we'd get like a few hundred thousand dollars. It was a disaster. They found out he had done weird things. They didn't do enough background check. There were people that had former girlfriends that had some pretty alarming claims. That's an old show. Now we have The Bachelor. We have The Golden Bachelor, and he is just as nice as can be. Every girl he meets, he's like, "That you're just so special. Oh, that's so special. I haven't kissed a woman besides my wife, you know, and it's been six years since she's passed. And Right around the time that they're about to get married or the end, news comes out that he had a a girlfriend for many, for about a year and a half in between the wife passing and him going on The Golden Bachelor. And this woman comes out and she's like, look, I'm just going to tell my story. The Hollywood Reporter, I think, did the story on it. They went and spoke to people that she told what was going on at the time, which is that's how they always like verify these stories that involve dating or sexual relationships. They're like, did you come home from the horrible experience and tell your roommate five years ago, we're going to interview the roommate and the roommate remembers it. Okay. That's why they, they interview people like that to be like, is this woman lying or what? This episode of Juicy Scoop is brought to you by Booking.com, Booking.Yeah. Booking.com offers possibilities across the U.S. for all the travelers you want to be. From trendy boutique hotels to spacious apartments with so many choices across the U.S., you can book whoever you want to be. So whether you're going with your family, your kids, a girl's weekend, maybe you want to book a five-star hotel to just indulge your luxury side, or maybe you're looking to book a remote cabin in the woods to explore your adventurous side, there are so many possibilities. Book whoever you want to be on Booking.com, Booking.Yeah. They also said on The Golden Bachelor that he was a retired restaurateur. Well, his only job with restaurants was that he worked at some Mr. Quick hamburger joint, which is great. He worked since he was high school, and he owned one, and it was a franchise, but he sold it in 1985. 
after he retired from various like management type of jobs, then he went on to work in jan- like as a janitor at a mental hospital. He met someone there. He met people there. But he met this one woman there and he's like, hey, would you, you know, help me with something at my house? They start a romance. They start a romance. It goes on for a year and a half in which he he begs her to leave her job and move to this lake house, which there really isn't anything else around. But he's like, but you still have to pay me a thousand in rent, even though we're living together and you're my girlfriend. So she's like, well, I better keep a job. So she's like commuting an hour every day to keep a job. She whittles it down to 850. He also says to this woman, um, when we go out to dinner, it's going to be split skis, 50-50. But you'll give me the money like prior to it or afterwards so that I always look cool when I pay the bill. I'll, this is a story she told her friends. The friends all said this has happened a year and a half ago. So he goes on the show and he really perks up. When the woman that he's going to marry, um, Teresa, reveals that she is, a, you know, into stocks and she has five licenses to sell, sell stocks and she has properties. And people notice that he really seemed to perk up, even though all three women, like a lot of bachelors, he's like, you're the one. I love you. It is a fantasy suite, the whole thing. So he chooses her. They have their televised wedding. Some of these other women that were on the show are really loving the limelight and who can blame them? One is a Kris Jenner lookalike. The other one is a Caitlyn Jenner lookalike. And the two of them were doing like kind of got some Instagram following and having some fun. And so everyone's sort of enjoying it. But now it's been three months and they're getting divorced. And people say that's going to cost them a lot of money because it wasn't long enough to get the endorsements. They probably have to return the Neil Lane ring. But basically they said they couldn't decide on a place to live together and leave their families. Also, Teresa didn't want to stop working and she would have had to stop working if she was just going to like live at this lake house. And they are holding hands and they did an interview and they were asked, what about all this, these previous stories of him kind of being like a dick boyfriend to this, to this girlfriend that we never knew he even had between the wife and going on the Golden Bachelor. And she's like, he's told me all that. And we've talked through it. And we just, it's so special. Oh, it's so special. How many people have come to us and we've given them hope on love and we don't want them to lose hope. We don't, well, you should. It was 50 women trying to choose one. One got him and it didn't fucking work out. There isn't a lot of hope, I don't think. But it's a TV show and whatever. Um, I think they're, we're not ever really going to hear from them again. This is not somebody that I think we're going to see doing, you know, a bunch of endorsements like the younger Bachelor people. I don't see like Depends in their future or anything. I think they're just going to go away because it's kind of embarrassing because we gave them so much more respect than we did the young kids. Like all the younger people watching the show was like, I love the Golden Bachelor they really talk and they really care and he's not out to be a star. And then then they saw that, you know, he had a spray tan and he lied about a girlfriend and we're just like, ugh. And he was cheap. And oh, the poor, when the girl, when he told the girl that she had to move out, that they're broken up, she had to move out. He's like, you have to move out now. And she's like so flushered. She like falls down the stairs. Not that that's funny, but she hurts her ankles, hurt her ankle. And, and she's like trying to get, and he wouldn't even drive her to the hotel. He's like, here, let me just get the walker into your car and goodbye. And let me know when you get to the hotel because you were so special to me. So I'm glad to expose that Jerry, Gary, whatever the hell his name is, wasn't great. I'm glad that she got out. They had a prenup, so we don't have anything to worry about. And um, yeah, that's the end of that. So we'll see. I'm still looking for the golden gay. I would like to see a late in life lesbian or late in life uh, gay guy, not someone that's been gay his whole life. I don't know why. I just think it'll be an interesting thing. And I believe the former batch, the the latest bachelor, his dad did come out later in life because I saw him say that in an interview. So here's to the golden gay. Think about it. Could be a lot of fun. Okay. Now, this is a sad story that's going to lead to a longer conversation from me. Kyle Marissa Roth has died. She was a popular TikToker known for weighing in on celebrity gossip. Um, She was about 36 years old, and her family announced that she died last week. As of today, um, we don't know what she died from. 
she did have colon cancer, but she was not in a, she was doing videos about a week ago. So it wasn't like she was in hospice or anything like that. So we don't know what she died from as of now. But the story is is really um, tragic, but quite interesting of how this involves celebrity gossip. So I'm surprised that I have never really come across this girl because you know how much I'm on TikTok. The algorithm knows what I like. I watch a lot a lot of other creators that, you know, talk about pop culture or do deep dives. And um, what but what she did was she did a lot of blind items. Let me explain what blind items are. There it's something that I do not cover because I think it's bullshit. Um, it's anonymous stuff that people send in and then anonymous creators, we don't know who they are, they go behind other names, um, Dimois, Anti Lawyer, whatever, Laney, whoever these people are, I don't know. And they write them in a way that I guess they can't really be sued because they don't call them out until after it's been revealed. What I have found out from good research, but again, Juicy Scoop is comedic commentary on my opinion, okay? So what I say here is my opinion based on me walking on the earth for this many years being in this business. A lot of these stories are just straight up bullshit. Some of them, the people just make out and pull from the sky. Some, I believe, um, they're putting them out there because they have a relationship with someone who's like, put this out there to hurt my enemy or distract people from me or help me, whatever. They give these stories that are not real. Some are stolen from other creators and regurgitated to look like their blind item. But these these groups that are anonymous on Reddit or whatever, again, all anonymous people talking can perpetuate these stories. And now with the rise of TikTok, they get deeper and bigger and people, it's it goes to like the famous story of Richard Gere, That happened 30 years ago when there was no social media. Somebody just started a rumor saying that he was sent to the hospital because he was having some funky sexual relationship and a gerbil was stuck in his anus. Okay, that was the story. To this day, we remember it. We know it's not true now, but that was a big story. And these stories have gone on through blind items in the last 15 years that are really damaging and not real. Also, with the the rise of Instagram, where people will just send in an anonymous email to one of these creators that we don't know who they are. So they could be at a party. They could be talking to you. They could be at your table. They could be Monica from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. You don't know. You know what I say. I'm Heather McDonald, Juicy Scoop. What I say, if I say I don't really like this show or I think this is going on with this person's marriage, I'm standing behind it. You might not like me when you see me at a party because you're like, that bitch said she thinks I, um, you know, that I'm whatever, that I'm insecure or hypocritical. Yeah, I've called stars hypocritical. Yes, I have. So they, those people that have called have said they're hypocritical, they may not like me because that's my opinion of them. But they know that I said it. I didn't I didn't create, you know, a a juicy scoop that's just like a, a, a someone choose pouring juice and a, and a scooper and you never know who I am. Okay. But sometimes this content is good and interesting. But the blind item stuff, I've never been into for this reason because there's no facts behind it. There, It could be someone could just write in. I saw Heather McDonald at Ralph's and she was screaming at a checker. And then she took her, her bag and screamed at her son and tripped and fell, and I saw it. And then that person then posts it. And they're like, oh my God, I remember hearing that. And then everyone comes, I remember hearing that Heather would go to Ralph's. I remember, you know, and it's just, so a lot of these these big stars that get these stories, they don't address them. They, do, they just let it go. And they're like, I'm not gonna address this ridiculous story because it's ridiculous. And if I try to, um, you know, defend myself, then it gives more light to these people who are making money off these crazy fake stories about me. With this girl, she would take all those stories and regurgitate it and share it in, I guess, a very funny, entertaining way in which she has a lot of a lot of fans and a lot of people, other creators on TikTok that are very sad about what happened to her that we don't know. 
one of the things that she was doing was, remember when I talked about all the videos that were on TikTok about people making fun of J-Lo's scene from her documentary about making her music movie where she's like, I'm just that crazy, this hair reminds me of that crazy girl running up and down the Bronx, 16 years old, crazy, crazy girl. And that and the Bodego um, where she orders her food from the Bodego and people don't think that she was authentically from, you know, Jenny from the Bronx. I didn't really think that was like a Bronx way to order a Bodego sandwich. I don't know. I'm not from the Bronx. I'm from the south side of Ventura, okay? Boulevard in the Valley, 818 till I die. So whatever. So all of that I made fun of. I made fun of it here. I didn't use J-Lo's music. I didn't cut a clip of her from her um, from her show and use it to make a video. I just acted it out and talked about it and put it on the podcast. So I'm safe. But what happens on the TikToks and stuff is that people will take clips from the move from her movie, which she owns the copyright of, or her music, and then whatever they want to do, discuss it, make fun of it, whatever. Well, she got her team allegedly to go, hey, this is a copyright infringement. They got a hold of TikTok people and this girl's TikTok allegedly got taken down and she had over 750,000 followers and she was very, very upset about it. And she did a video about how upset she was. I've worked on this for four years. I make money off of TikTok. How is it that this big star has the power to do this? I mean, it is it is copywritten material. That's her movie. She spent $20 million on it. Um, if she was upset by it, I think there's a better way to go about it. I think it would have been funny if she did her own TikTok laughing about that particular scene. Like a funny one I saw is that someone put her voice over the dog, um, a little dog with crazy hair. And it was going like, oh, who's that crazy girl walking, running around the streets? She could have made fun of it like that. Like, that is funny. I love that. Everybody loved that scene. But again, it is her voice. It is her music. She owns the thing. So I get it. But this girl was very upset about that. And then she was able to regain like 175,000 followers. I also know that other people that have made a living, again, being anonymous, putting out blind items, some of which that are horrific lies, which I'll go deeper into my Patreon, which comes out every Friday, um, pretty shocking stuff that is completely untrue. And there's a documentary coming out about one of these horrible lies um, that a that a creator that makes a lot of money, you know, who's acting like he's somebody that he's not. That whole story I will tell on Patreon. But this is all this this is happening. And I'm wondering if these bl- this this blind item stuff will start to go away a little bit. Because um, it really shouldn't be taken seriously. And and when people are anonymous with their information and there's nothing behind it, I don't like that it also runs um, reality show storylines when it could be a producer on those Reddit pages writing something like, ooh, I saw Jax talking to a girl at a restaurant. And then, there, then the producer, I'm just saying hypothetically, then the producer goes, Hey, Sheena, did you see the Vanderpump, um, you know, Reddit log about how this person was hanging out um, with this other girl? Whoa. Oh, and then they talk about it. And now it's a storyline that has no real merit. Like, unless you've seen the person, unless there's a photo, unless the actual other woman comes forward, then then that's a real storyline. So I I, I'm not for this. Of course, I'm very sad that this woman is not here. But I think the bigger story is, you know, because people are like, oh, my God, did she did something happen to her um, because she lost this income on TikTok? Because not only was Big Stars angry about the way she presented her material, or was it because um, other, even maybe other people that created the blinds she was taking the blind items from other creators and then regurgitating it which that's what people do I mean I talk about a page six article I talk about a TMZ article I didn't break the story I didn't but it's different when it's these blinds I guess so I don't know it's a bigger conversation to have 
in this world of TikTok and gossip and celebrity news, and which I'm a part of too. And um, but I feel very sorry for her family and her friends. And she was, um, you know, apparently very entertaining on when she would get on the TikTok and talk. So um, very interesting. You guys know I do my own hair. And sometimes it's relaxing. Sometimes it just takes too much time. And I don't really love the final result. Well, let me tell you what I'm loving right now. It's Waze new anti-frizz cream. Because who wants to be frizzy? Grab Waze new anti-frizz cream because it's a lightweight cream that provides immediate frizz control that lasts up to 72 hours. I also love that it protects my hair against heat because I blow it. I use a curling iron. Sometimes I've used a straightener and it really can get dry. And this really helps reduce and repair split ends, which I also suffer from because it comes with this intense hydration, which we all need. I also love their leave-in conditioner. I use their detox shampoo once a week that really helps get rid and clean the product buildup. Also hard water deposits, all of it. Frizz free up your schedule with Way. Go to the way, T H E O U A I dot com and enter the promo code JUICY for 15% off any product. That's the way dot com, promo code JUICY. This episode of Juicy Scoop is brought to you by Booking dot com, Booking dot yeah. Booking dot com offers possibilities across the U.S. for all the travelers you want to be. From trendy boutique hotels to spacious apartments with so many choices across the U.S., you can book whoever you want to be. And by that, I mean, when it's me, do I want to be the traveling comedian? Maybe I'm bringing my son. Maybe I'm bringing an opener. I do it when I was booking hotels on the college search for my son. That was super easy. That was special. I am looking forward to doing a girls weekend soon and be with my college sorority sisters. Also, Peter and I have a wedding in September. I want something fabulous. So maybe you want to, I know I do, want to book a five-star hotel to indulge your luxury side. Or maybe you're looking to book a remote cabin in the woods to explore your adventurous side. There are so many possibilities. Book whoever you want to be on booking.com, booking.yeah. That's booking.com, booking.yeah. Meanwhile, J-Lo, allegedly, according to Us Weekly, is disappointed over the lackluster concert sales. So, I mean, J-Lo has not been having a great couple months, as I just explained. And she has all these big shows coming up. A bunch she did cancel. And, you know, it's hard. I don't know what she's charging for these tickets. I don't know what city she's going to. But it is hard to sell tickets to any show. And, um, you know, and that's why people like to do residencies or they try to be more selective. Unless you're Taylor Swift, like, it is it is hard. And so sometimes you see some of the biggest bands all of a sudden be like, Oh, we're so sorry. Um, family emergency. We had to, uh, we'll reschedule or you'll get your money back or whatever. And it's sometimes because they are seeing that it is just not selling and based on statistics or whatever, it's not going to, it's not going to sell 7,000 tickets in the last week. So like, what are we going to do? Do you, do you want to come and perform? Do you want the news out that all these t- tickets have been discounted? Will that make your reputation look worse? It's better just not to do the show. So I find her to be a great performer. I like her music, um, but that's what's going on with her. Big news in the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills world. Um, Crystal has announced, she did a video a couple days ago saying, I will not be returning to the 14th season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And she looked cute. She just talked to the camera and did like a reel about it. And she said, I never thought that I would ever be on a show like this. And every year that I was asked back the last few years, I was so honored to do it. Um, It's bittersweet. I'm happy to have other opportunities coming up, you know, whatever that might be. And so I think it's very clear without her saying it that she was not asked back because she goes, I was asked back all these other years. I think she wasn't asked back. I think, you know, but I also think. Her family wasn't really destroyed. Her marriage wasn't destroyed. There was, when I had Anna Marie on, who was also not asked back, they had a conflict. And it was that Crystal was like questioning whether she was really about her medical degree and what she did in medicine. 
And it was kind of a weird thing. And then Anna Marie, after she did my show, I think she did another show when she knew she wasn't going to be asked back and got a little more real and went after Crystal and was like, Crystal, after she went after me off camera, she was like, oh, I'm just doing that for the show, something like that. Being that she was, you know, trying to get have action happen in the show, in which that's why Anne Marie said, you should be grateful I made you relevant. Well, it didn't work for either one of them. Trying to produce or not, it didn't really work. Um, I think most people felt that she was a nice person. I like her personally. I enjoyed interviewing her. I thought she was really cute and outgoing. I don't know that that makes the best housewife. I don't know that if that's a longevity when, you know, and she, she, she that her life was that. She had a brother who was in music and like broke over his girlfriend over COVID and we had to see that. It was pretty dull. She has two little cute kids. She, you know, uh, likes to make her authentic Chinese food. It's all very nice, but it's not super juicy for the housewives and you got to keep it going. So Um, I don't think it's the last we're going to see of her, but we'll see what she does. She has this coconut water company that she did herself that's huge. Of course, her husband's a huge director. She's going to be fine, but maybe, and I think this is a nice little platform. Maybe she'll do other things. Maybe she'll, maybe she will get in the cooking field. Maybe she'll be a a judge on a show. I think it, I think there could be some really great other opportunities for her. So, um, but then I noticed this, uh, I follow all about the, Real Housewives on um, on Instagram, and it appeared that that Anna Marie was answering to something that she believed Crystal posted on X Twitter, formerly Twitter, and it was pretty bad. So then she says, um, so she believed that that Crystal wrote something like. To Anna Marie, like, really, karma girl, why don't you say that to your rapist transphobic husband? And then Anna Marie went on and said, false allegations against athletes are easy. Anyone with actual money knows that. You worry about your husband, the Lion King, because he directed Lion King, and your brother, for that matter, oh, and that video of you blurting out the N-word, getting out, fake, woke, racist. I saw this. I was like, oh, my God. What is what is this? This is so ugly and dark. Maybe this is why both of you were not asked back because they knew there was so much animosity. Well, we find out later that that wasn't Crystal's account. She never wrote the thing about Anna Marie's husband. It was the actual the account was um was uh, it was something different like it was like crystals or something and they added a a letter but they put her face so she never said that to Anna Marie but Anna Marie answered back to the fake account something pretty horrible hopefully Anna Marie has taken it down written her an apology and we'll just stay off social media for like three months. That's my advice. I mean, I when I first thought it was real, I'm like, I don't believe there's a video. I think she's just furious. But this stuff is can be very dangerous. And it's it's a bummer, like I've said, that so much of the reality shows that we watch now are driven by the social media and all the fans getting involved and all of them being involved with each other on social media in like a very negative way. Oh, in case you didn't know, karma's a bitch. <laughs> yeah, uh, karma's a bitch doing great. I'm um, going to uh, Miami to for pride. <laughs> so I just saw her perform the song. We're talking about Jojo Siwa. And she is such a great dancer. And uh, the crowd seems to love it. But the karma's a bitch song was given to this other singer, Brittany Smith, um, like 12 years ago. And it's exactly the same song. But then somehow... She didn't want it, came back to some other producer, and then came to JoJo. But I don't think JoJo knew that someone else had performed this song and recorded it and even did a music video about it like 12 years ago. And that's what I think is so kind of crazy that like that she doesn't even know have this knowledge. And she's kind of like, whatever, who cares? I'm good. I'm doing something different. <laughs> you know, so she's happy. She's happy. 
Also speaking of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, um, Christina Applegate said about 10 years ago, she was asked if she'd be interested in joining the cast. Who are we going to get for the new cast? Bette Midler, according to Radar Online, said she would really like a spot. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I don't think she would fit in with the women, really. I think she's too big of a star. I think she's not the right age. Like I said, I would like Hilaria Baldwin. Um, I'm fine. I would, I'm fine with Camille coming back and Denise Richards. That to me would be the way to go. Or, or and or or all of them, Kathy and Kim Richards, along with Kyle. But apparently, um, of the housewives, the they're all the ones coming back are Dorit, um, Dorit, Kyle, Garcelle, Sutton. And Erica. So we just need like a couple more. And um, the only new one I want is Hilaria. That's it. Okay. Robin Dixon, she was straight up honest. She's on Real Housewives of Potomac. She's like, hi, I was fired. Whatever, I was fired. I don't know what's going on with Potomac. Candace also is not coming back and she's pregnant. Um, this other girl, I forgot her name. She was the newest hire. She's not coming back. The season did not get a lot of buzz. The juiciest thing was this girl, Mia, divorced her husband. She was honest about being like a gold digger. And it came out in the reunion that one of her children might not be his. And it might be her old boyfriend that she apparently was engaged to before she married him. And I mean, that whole thing is juicy, but we didn't totally see it play out on the show. So, of course, she's staying. But, um, yeah, that's kind of that's that oh, so many so much housewives news on miami this woman alexis who was on married to her third husband who was pretty cute and he was like a real estate commercial broker or something though they didn't own any property which was kind of weird but they lived in this beautiful luxury apartment which i think maybe he managed the building and they got a deal on the apartment and last season we saw that they had to leave because the owner was going to sell it he then said it's better to rent than buy and did this whole like master class of why it's better to rent property than buy, I guess, in Miami. I don't know. There was stories and rumors going on, which is on the show, that they're not financially as strong as they present. She, of course, like any housewife, is very flashy with the labely things. He has filed for divorce and she has said, I'm shocked by it. And they're currently filming. So again, this will make... There's nothing that a housewife audience enjoys more than sitting back and watching other women their age who have appear to have more money, better plastic surgery, and a fancier lifestyle get divorced. So every time there's a divorce, um, I think that the producers are dancing in a corner and just like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear you're getting divorced. What? Because we want to see it. Just It is what it is. It's juicy. It gives us stuff to talk about. Um, they seem like they had a lot of passion. He seemed like he was into it. But you don't know. You get on the show. People go, why? Why are there so many divorces when people open their life and they, they become, become housewives? Because of this. It's the man ego. The male ego. The male ego, a lot of these guys are you know, either successful, good looking or both. And they've had a pretty great life. And they are like, sure, honey, go on the show. And then especially now, with all the social media, somehow they get on it and they start reading the comments. You need you miss leg day at the gym. Where's your chin? All this stuff that they're like, what? They've never heard negative stuff about them their whole life then they start to probably take it out on their wife. And then their wife is like, I don't need you to be a dick to me. I'm going to BravoCon and people are going to cheer for me like I'm a rock star. So you, I don't need you. I'm going to sell candles. And they start to fight and they go into their own separate rooms and they get on their phones and they start reading the hate or the love. So the love blows up their brains or the love is the guy getting DMs from other women watching the show, seeing if they'll respond. I mean, it's bad, which I have said. If you're going to go on these shows, I would almost hire, just like I said, there's a sober coach. I would almost hire 
a social media coach. Um, someone who helps you with your social media, but also someone who's like, okay, these the, I'm taking these apps off your phone or you cannot go here or, um, you know, whatever it is. Very limited to DMs. You, oh, no one can DM you unless you follow them. I don't know what it is, but that is what I would suggest if someone wants to go on this show or if you're someone who wants to look for a new business to create. Maybe you were someone who reported on uh, blind items and you want to get out of that. Maybe you do this. I don't know. Um, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Monica, I just listened to an interview. She was on Nick Vial's show. And I, he was a little frustrated with her. It was, you know, but she is pregnant with her fifth child. She said it was this guy she met when she was shooting the show. He's like a sporty guy. He's 10 years her junior. She's like 39. This is her fifth child. And they're just boyfriend and girlfriend. Who knows what will happen? She's happy to be pregnant. But the way she talked about the show and everything was kind of interesting. Um, I thought she would go on to be like, on. I feel like if the, I don't know now if my prediction is right about her going to go, that if she's going to go on the villains or on traitors or whatever, because I think she's been a little bit too exposed. I think she's, been too honest in these interviews and laid her cards out. I think if she would have stepped back and remained a little mysterious and been like, guess I'm not coming back. Won't you want to know how I, you know, like she really lays it on, which, hey, we like authentic and honest people. But if that's when you're on the show, we want you to be authentic. But if you're not asked back to be on the show, now you got to kind of go, okay, what do I want to save for myself? She, he kept saying like, hey, that would kind of bother me. If someone that was trolling me or I thought was a fake account, much like what I talked about previously, then was like working with me or working for me. And I agreed with that. And she just kind of didn't get it. She basically said that um, the actual casting people did not know about it, but she felt that Heather Gay did, being that Heather Gay and Heather Gay's hairdresser was one of the people on the reality Von Tees. I don't know. I just felt like I don't think she's right for the show regardless of this. They're not they they can't move on from this. And what do they do? They bring back Mary. Mary is the religious leader of her church that is now defunct. I went to look at it a couple of years ago. Um wow, I mean what the, what that woman's done with people and taking their money and convincing them that she's like the second coming is so bizarre and so crazy, but they need a crazy person. And one thing Monica said was, she was pretty honest. She's like, I think I was a Hail Mary. I literally think they were like, well, we don't have Jen Shaw anymore. So we'll just get this chick with her crazy past of having an affair with her former brother-in-law being divorced and all of this. And, but you know, and that she worked for Jen Shaw, and she talked about that. She's like, I did this whole thing because I hated Jen Shaw because I worked for Jen Shaw, and she was awful. And so all of us that worked for her were like, let's create this account and show how awful she was. And all the cast members loved the account because we were exposing how awful she was. And they were all scared of her, and they were all happy to see her go and be behind bars because she probably was so scary. She probably was threatening them. Um with exposing whatever secret they didn't want on the show. And it just, I don't know, I feel like the magic revealed element of these housewives and reality shows is definitely kind of ruining the fun of it. It really is. And knowing that these women are doing so many things and maybe being very performative or producing themselves or acting out or acting like they're more angry at a cast member than they really would be so that they can stay on the show because now their lifestyle requires them to stay on the show is kind of where I'm like, oh, I don't know where this is going, but of course I'll keep watching. Um, on Real Houses of OC, the new girl, Jennifer, remember her? And she had a the boyfriend that everyone thought he like cheated on her in the past. You probably are like, Heather, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Anyway, they're getting married. They're engaged. So there's one person that's staying together. Um, I talked about on my Patreon about OJ. I also shared on there on the tier of juicy crimes an episode that I did many years ago on this show 
with Kim Goldman, which was fascinating. It was fascinating for me to listen to again. So if you're part of that, both there's a two-parter on there, and it's really interesting. And one of the things that was so interesting about OJ, his death, is that this book, If I Did It, in which he got with this writer who coincidentally was a witness for the prosecution. Um, it's just so crazy. He was a witness for the prosecution. He was like a neighbor who heard the dog barking, which set the timeline because the do- bar- dog was saw a horrific crime of its owner, Nicole, be killed and, and Ron Goldman. So the dog's crazy barking is what set the timeline. And would he have enough time to do that crime based on the dog barking? Get to his house on Rockingham. Get... Um, change his clothes, jump over the fence, get into the room, change his clothes, and get to the limo, which the limo said he was late. So that was all super important. So that guy was on the stand, on the court TV, talking about that guy then got hired to work on the book with OJ, If I Did It, in which they they, um, wrote the book together. And basically, the book's was him saying, if I did it, this is how I would do it. And it was like this create this like fantasy weird story where he had this friend, OJ had this friend that was with him. And people were like, who's the friend? Is it his older child? What is this? And most people said, I think it's his alter ego. And that is, this is what really happened. But he was not with another person. It was like, his alter ego, and that's how he can like compartmentalize and live his life like he didn't do it. I don't know. It's crazy. But when the Goldman sued in the civil suit about this um, and the book, they wanted the book off the shelves because it was so horrible. They actually um, gained the rights to that book. And the judge said, you need to um, it needs to be promoted because he he has all these other debts he has to pay. So as the book sold, not only did the Goldmans get a small portion of it, but also other debtors got money from it. This is my understanding. So now the book is available and out there. And so hopefully what if the profits will then go to the Goldman family because they won a $33 million judgment. They got very little of it over these years. Um, obviously it's been very hard for anybody involved in this case to hear that he died because it just brings up all those emotions, whatever those emotions might be. Um, but I mean, I remember like going to a Barnes and Noble and like reading it for like an hour and a half because I didn't want to buy it, but it was very bizarre and just such a weird circle. And also one thing Kim said in the interview with me so many years ago is, they went on Oprah, uh, she and her dad, and talked about all of this. And it was like that night or the next day that OJ went and broke into the hotel room and held the guy hostage to get his memorabilia back. Like, so I don't know if she she kind of felt like, did we trigger that kind of anger that then resulted in him doing nine years in prison for that? I don't know, but it's it's crazy. And now the attorney has said, First, he said, oh, they won't get any money from his estate. He didn't have very much money at all, OJ. Um, I don't even know if he had like a few hundred thousand money. You know, he did he did ways of like where his kids could like um, buy a house, but then have him live in it to like protect money. There was a lot of shady stuff. But hopefully um, the the portion of the book sales will go to the Goldman family. And but the, the rest of the civil... Um, judgment still remains unpaid. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, Okay. Also, the talk was canceled after 15 seasons. And that is a show that's changed um, cast members many times. I have a little bit of an interest in it because I went out for it to be one of the original people. And I went to the very end um, in which they like matched us with people. And I was, you know, talking with um, uh Julie, what's her name? Julie Moonves, and um, who kind of created it. And then, of course, they wanted Sharon Osbourne and Holly Robinson Pete. And that was the original cast. Then, then it changed. Anyway, it's not coming back. And I don't care because they never once had me on. 
And I've told you this before. I like had publicists pitch me over and over when I had two stand-up specials come out, when I had both my books came come out, when they had little portions of like hot topics with comics. No, they I could not get on that show for the life of me. So goodbye. Who cares? Um, okay. Gypsy Rose Blanchard, a little bit update on why, why she is divorcing her husband. She said he was a food hoarder. And he would like hoard all this food. And one day she cleaned it out of the um, refrigerator and he got very he got very irate. And that was triggering to her because her mom would hoard food and control food and all that kind of stuff. And um, and I thought that was interesting that she said it reminded her. It, his actions reminded her of reminded her of her mom because. A lot of people have noticed how much her mom looks like her husband or how much her husband looked like her mom. Very similar face shape, nose, very similar. So that was weird. And then the fact that she was saying it was reminding her of her mother. Also, she said he snored and he liked to keep the room very hot at night. And she's like, I, she was like, I had a better sleep in prison. So get me the hell out of this hot house with the hoarding of the food and the loud snoring. I would, I slept better in prison. So she's living her life, but that was why they broke up. Megan Markle has started this company. It is the American Riviera Orchard Company. And she has created her first item product, which is rustic jam. Um, I guess from her, her own trees. I don't know. But all of her good friends who have a big following received it and they posted about it. This was like the PR box that like basically Kim Kardashian does it with like new skims or whatever, sends it to a bunch of people. And then everyone's like, oh, my God, girl, it's a really smart way to get the news out. I don't know how much this jam is going to cost. In Real Housewives of Miami, Julia was going to do jams. She was going to do jams. She was going to do jams and she was going to charge $30 for each jar of jam, which um, her friends on the show were like, Heather, I, I mean, Julia, I don't think you're going to sell that much jam for that price. I don't know how much this jam is going to cost, but this is very like the whole idea of like this very like that the Magnolia people that have their big line at Target. It's. She's going to, you know, get into cooking, YouTubing. She brags about how she has chickens. Don't forget who had chickens first. The tra that the whole traditional wife thing, it's called trad life, like on social media, where it's like young women are like, I want to make the bread from scratch. And I can because my husband is so wealthy. I don't have to work and I can need my own dough. I don't know. I don't get it. It's not something I want to do. And jam is just basically cooked berries with sugar. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. But I mean, if there was a jam, I mean, I would buy like the Smucker's Low Sugar Jam. I don't know. Anyway, so that's what she's doing. We'll see where she goes with that. But I did see something that her half brother, now she has the two, she has the sister, Samantha Markle, who wrote the book, The Pushy Sister which was about her sister, Megan. Megan's like, I didn't really grow up with these people. They were like 18 and 20 when I was born, whatever. But the brother was, I saw the most bizarre thing. The brother put on a brown wig. I mean, he's like mid fifties or 60, put on a big wig and was like imitating her and making, calling her like a funny name and mocking her and, I was just like, that is just so weird, dude. Like, what I, I, what are you doing? Like, just let it go. You don't like her. You're not friends with her anymore. Like, they're so mad that she's famous and that she wants nothing to do with them, that they won't stop. Instead of just being like, my sister's famous. She doesn't want anything to do with me. I, w I wish she did, but whatever. If she's that awful, why do you want anything to do with her either? Like, let it go. You can see she didn't send him any jam. Um, I went to go see Joe Coy, and that was really fun. We were um, in Palm Desert area, La Quinta, 
at our house for Coachella weekend. No, I did not go to any of the Coachella stuff. I could hear it from my house, and it was fun. And instead, we went to Agua Caliente to see my friend Joe Coy, the comedian, and we had so much fun. And as I said before, my son Drake and his son went to elementary school together, so that was fun that they reconnected. We brought my nephew, and um, so that was really fun. And and I think it's interesting because let now let's talk about Vanderpump Rules. There is this girl on there that was is dating. Tom Schwartz and she goes by Joe but Tom Schwartz calls her Joseph Joseph and she calls Tom Schwartz T money <laughs> and they are you guys you do not need to watch this show if you're like Heather don't do a recap of it. I'm not I have to tell you why this is interesting and you will find it interesting so the history of this girl is she's a hairdresser she knew Kristen Doty, who's now on the Valley, and would see Tom Schwartz around. And shortly after his divorce from Katie, she saw him somewhere. And now, according to the latest interview that she did, which I listened to on Rachel Raquel Rachel's podcast, she tells the story of it. And But I think that she got the name Joseph. I think from Joe Coy. I think they probably watched a special together and just thought that was so funny. I don't know how they got each other's nicknames, but that's what I think. And I mentioned this when I went on Lala's podcast that I'm like, I think she very much wanted to make a splash and be on the show because she would do all these things trying to be like funny and quirky, much like the assistant on there too. Um, like doing faces and being like, <laughs> and um and at one point she goes and they go on this like um, this little boat thing where they're like pedaling, but it's a swan. And she just tells a story about how she had a pet turtle and it kind of came out of nowhere. Now, I know things are edited, but it almost felt like she was saving stories and things to be funny. She's very natural. She wears very little bit of makeup and she's a hairdresser. So we see this relationship unfold. She lives with him. She says, well... Um, I was just trying to save money. So I like saw him at a party and I'm like, God, I um, think I could like live with you for a while. And he's like, sure, um, I have an extra bedroom. So I'm like, okay. And like for a while, like, I don't know why like Katie was mad that I was living with her ex-husband. But I mean, for a while, like, no, it was like six days, nothing happened. And then we got feelings for each other. So I'm like, God, like I, I'm so mean. These girls are so mean to me. And they have this huge platform. And she's like saying that, you know, since she's been on TV, it, you know, it's just been ruthless, the online hate she's gotten. Again, welcome to the world of this. You, again, don't have to be online. You don't have to look at this stuff. I know I've been sucked in. I've been affected. I treat things differently now so I can speak on it. I know how hard it is. I know how frustrating it is when you read things from anonymous people that are not true about you. But, like, it is not Sheena's and Katie's fault that people found you to be annoying on the show. It's not. And they, we don't have, like, you know, uh, power over our followers. None of these people, myself included, are ever saying, hey, Juicy Scoopers, we ride at dawn. Please start writing every single person uh, the, this please start writing this person the most horrific things that you can because that would make me happy. That's not Selena Gomez's. That's not anything. What I've said before are there are bots. There are bots that you could buy to go after your enemy. There are bots that you could buy and put in a thing that could go and um, look like your enemy's followers going after you. So it's like, oh, my God. My, you know, my enemy's followers wrote this horrible thing. Look, and there's and they're anonymous people. They're anonymous bots. There's just no way to know. So it's like you shouldn't. You're not a victim here. You're not a victim because of online bullshit, because you chose to be on a show that you were friends with all these people for years. You were trying to get on the show for years. You got on the show. You fell in love with Tom Schwartz. Tom Schwartz was like. Okay, yeah, I guess you're good. And the way she would describe their their relationship, she'd be like, we just had so much fun together. We would just be laughing about anything. I'd be like, hey, why did the turtle cross the road? And he'd be like, 
to get to the forest. And we would just like die laughing. I'm like, that isn't funny. Like, that isn't funny. Then she's like, and it was really upsetting when Sheena, I, okay, so she's always like, she's always wearing a hat like this, okay? So they go to this party and Sheena's like, why are you wear, always wearing a hat? Like, you're a hairdresser. You have cute braids. Show it. And she took her hat off. And so, I mean, Raquel's sitting there interviewing her and she's like, I mean, that is so offensive. Like, who takes somebody else's hat off? No, I mean, it's like, I'm like, if these two girls try to say that what Sheena did while having cocktails at a DJ night at Hotel Ziggy or whatever the fuck is any kind of assault, like, get the fuck out of here. Like, what are you talking about? And so she's, you know, saying her thing. She's clearly not going to come back on the show. That's why she did Rachel's show. Um... She's not going to come back on Vanderpump. It's over. Tom Schwartz has a brand new girlfriend that he is bringing around who he gushed about when I talked to him at the Valley premiere. Um, He's putting her on podcasts and things. She, you know, he's talking about her freely. And her whole gripe was she was like, I mean, Tom, T-Money and I have such a great time. I mean, if he wasn't on a show and if he didn't like, you know, have a phone and we were just alone in a forest together, we'd be the perfect couple. Well, yeah, if you're the only two people on earth, you'll be the perfect couple. Because guess what? There's nobody else. So let this be a lesson to you girls. If the guy is not bringing you around because it was all about the the people didn't really see. I guess he wasn't really talking about it that way. They were they're friends with benefits. She said he would never come out to the west side. She'd always have to go to near his house. He wouldn't go to paddleboard with her. She's like, he wouldn't go to my basketball games. I guess she played basketball. She's like, he wouldn't even wear the jersey that I made him. Okay, so you get it. Now you know. And people watching this, if you're in that position where the guy is like, I just like that it's so easy. I just like that it's not a relationship. He doesn't like you. So unless you're on the same exact thing of like, I don't want to marry you either. I don't want to be a couple. I am not. I don't expect to be t- taken as your plus one to a wedding. You're not coming as my plus one to the wedding. If there's any unevenness, get out because it's never going to change. And you're going to be hurt. But she got to be on the show. And then she did the ultimate thing to get him back. She dyed his hair platinum blonde, a horrible blonde. He looked hideous. He looked so much cuter with brown hair. And he went for it. He let her do her thing. I don't think that was great for her hairdressing business. But to each his own. You know, I I definitely think it was going to prevent him from getting as late, getting late as much as, you know, with his brown hair. So maybe that was her plan. Um, Anyway, I, yes, did it make the show interesting? Yes, of course the producers wanted her on it. She'll do just fine. She's selling hats and she's got her um, hairdressing thing. Now, what was interesting is that um, her real name is not Joe. Her real name, um, now, Betches has written about this. Internet Sleuths found it. This is from Connect, Connection Queen NX. Her name is Kaylee Wenberg. And that was her name. That's what she went by in 2010. I guess her middle name is Joe or Joanne or something. So then when she came to L.A. with this guy who... Allegedly, it was a triangle situation and they left the girlfriend behind. And so this is not, you know, whatever. She came with some guy. Then she changed her name to Joe and wrote it like J-O, like, like, I guess that would be short for Joanne. Whatever. She changed her name just like Raquel, just like Lala did. Lala was Lauren. I guess it's not that big deal to change your name. I don't know. I mean, whatever. I just thought that was interesting. So that's the whole story with her. But she's, you know, she has a big public Instagram. She's on a show. And that's the thing, people. If you're dating some guy and he's on a reality show, think about it. Do What will this mean? This means everyone's going to talk about my looks. This means anything I say or do can be used against me in a public forum. You're not going to be protected at all if you choose to go on a reality show. So you need to know that. Vanderpump was very good last night. It was very good. Um, But they talked about when Raquel did a podcast and they never mentioned that it was Bethany's podcast. And there was even some parts where I noticed that it could have been like, hey, go in and just say the podcast. 
all of them that said, did you hear the podcast? The podcast. She went on a podcast. Did you hear that Raquel went on a podcast? They never said Bethany's podcast. I think that was deliberate because Bethany is not in the good graces of Bravo anymore, obviously, with the reality reckoning. Um, But they all talked about it. And it was a big deal when she did that um, interview. We all were talking about it. And so it does make sense that they I, I appreciate that they talked about it on camera because they could have all called each other the night before and been like, let's really fuck her. Let's not even talk about it on camera. But they wanted to because they wanted to correct the things that she said. She said Ariana and I weren't really good friends ever. So Ariana's like, what? She said uh, Sheena and I weren't really good friends. And um, it was a mutual situation. Sheena wanted to correct that about rent and letting her stay and. So they did want to talk about it, and they used it on camera. Then Tom and James get together, and they both go back and forth about what she said about each other on the show. Was she really in love with James? No, she really wasn't. Was she really in love with Tom? And James like, she wasn't really in love with you either. They have like a really real conversation. And James, I think, is coming out really, really well this season. So also on Vanderpump Rules, it's a hot topic season of like between Sheena Lala, Ariana, and Katie. They were always all so close. Allie is there, who is um, who is the new girlfriend to James, which is interesting because now she's got a musical career. She has a song out, and she also tells him, I don't know if I ever, I don't know that I see getting married or having kids with you. And he's like, he starts to cry. I mean, it was a very real episode. He starts to cry. He's like, I'm not living with you for the last year and a half because I don't think you want to have my kids. Again, this is how you get on the show. This is how Joe got on the show. This is how Raquel got on the show through James. This is how Allie got on the show through James. This is how Brittany got on the show through Jax and is now on the Valley. The only real way you can get on the show is through the vagina, I guess. I don't know. But we have Lala now, and she, people, she's getting some heat because she is sharing in different interviews and also on what we're seeing on the show that she people think she's not being as supportive of Ariana and the house situation and you should move out. Why aren't you moving out? And a lot of it is because, you know, when you own a property together, whether you have a child there or not, it's not most attorneys will say, don't leave the property. Don't abandon the property. Don't abandon the house. Don't abandon your child. It will look worse. So they so Tom Sandoval and Ariana are like, what are we going to do about this? He, She finally goes, okay, I'll accept your offer for you to keep the house and me to move out. Then he's like, <clears throat> well, maybe I can't come up with money. Tom Schwartz, why don't you get a loan so that I can stay in this house? And the whole time she's like, I would have just sold the house back in March when the market was hotter. She didn't say that, but it was hotter back last March, a year from now, a year ago. But anyway, so we see all that. Then we also see that Lala's like, I'm going to go the sperm donor, donor route. Of course, she conceived her baby naturally with Randall Emmett, who we saw on the show all the time. They were engaged. I was supposed to go to their wedding. They broke up. It was, it was because, you know, what he did, it was all public record or whatever. It was out there. Why she broke up with him. Um, now she's saying, like, I should, you know, joking with Brittany on another show. Like, like, she did not enjoy having, being intimate with him. So this was a great way to get the, her second child. And I do think, you know, if you want to have your kids close together and there isn't someone significant in your life that you would ever want to have a child with or co-parent with being that she's in a custody situation that isn't ideal for her. So uh, she has this party and I think it's really great. It was, she had her top three choices. It was my understanding. You don't get to see what the guy looks like now because you might be able to find him. So you're kind of looking at their baby photos and then the guy writes what he wants to share about his life. And all of this is background checked. You can't lie and say you went to medical school if you didn't. So this one, you know, studied accounting. This one is a medical student. This one is a musician. And they all read it and they kind of all unanimously decide, okay, number one is it. So she's like, oh, I found my sperm donor. I thought that was really fun. And I think that might be a cool thing for other people to do if they go this route. It was a great advertising for the Cairo, whatever that place is, the sperm bank place. And it was a kind of a cool situation. So we got to see that as well on the show. So then we move over to the the Valley, which is so real. Oh, my God. So real about raising small kids, 
lack of a sex life, um, wondering, you know, do I want to have another or I'm unhappy and I only have one. I should get out of this marriage now. It is really good. I'm really liking all the cast members. And it is really kind of the surprise of the season of reality TV. It is really good. And, um, you know, so so watch that. That that was that was juicy. Then I watched the first episode of Hulu's um, The Vanderpump at it's called The Villa. And that is so that basically it's they go to this French villa and people go and stay there. And the staff is supposed to give them a great experience. And Lisa Vanderpump's running it and it's all pink. And they have a like poor man's jacks and Anastasi where it's this couple. Like, he sounds like Jax. He's not as cute as Jax. He's younger than Jax, but he, they all obviously got cast from different jobs that they had. Probably they found them on Instagram, looking hot, being mixologists, whatever. So it's a fun, hot group of people. And then um, they had an, they have an on and off relationship. The Jax lookalike and the Stassi girl. So I'm like, okay, this is kind of, it's kind of interesting. But Unlike a below deck, I don't know how many activities they can really do at this house. So we'll see how it, it goes. I was like, I'd go to this thing. This I would go to because this I'm not going down a slide in my bathing suit and having someone say like I was rude. Like I would be OK being on land and just eating the food. I don't care that the staff is getting wasted with me, whatever. I'd like to go. So I put it out to Lisa Vanderpump. I'm like, maybe I go there for like my 25th wedding anniversary next year. <laughs> She's like, do you really want to do that? I don't know. I don't know if they're looking for celebrities, but I would work it around a um, a trip, and that I would kind of, that I would kind of do because I think it would be more in my control, and it could be kind of fun. But you know, how do, do they want you to be extra demanding? To be, do you have to look like an asshole? Do you have to complain about Diet Coke? We don't know. Um, these conjoined twins. A lot of people said, Heather, you mentioned the conjoined twins that got married. And I said, I'm, they're the only ones. Well, they are not. First, there's these other conjoined twins that I talked about before. They have they passed like in the last week at 62. That was the one where one was like on a rolling chair. These two girls are um, Carmen and Lupita, and they are on TikTok, and they did a Q&A and shared their, their story. So she said, Carmen says, yes, I can drive because I have the right foot, so I controlled the driving. I thought that was interesting. Carmen also said, we share a bloodstream. So if one dies, we will both die within a couple days. That's sad, but just so you know. Carmen also said, if one of us is tired, we both don't have to both be tired because we have two separate brains. Yes, one of us can be awake and one of us can be asleep because, again, different brains. We have two separate people. So um, as far as the sex goes, they said one is asexual and the other one is dating. All right. Uh, Courtney Love just said that um, Taylor Swift is great for girls, but she doesn't think she's a great artist. It's like, oh, shut up, Courtney Love. Um, meanwhile, Travis, Kelsey, so they went to Coachella. They were in the VIP section. Uh, Teresa and Louie were there, and Louie was, like, filming them. She had a baseball hat on. He had a hat. They cuddled. They enjoyed watching the, the the musicians and the singers and everything had a great time. Everyone loves that she is just enjoying life, being able to enjoy other artists, enjoying her life as a woman in her young 30s with a hot boyfriend at Coachella. I thought that was great. He just got a job hosting a show called Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity Game Show. This is Travis Kelsey will be the host of it. Again, I, I totally am not surprised by this. He loves the camera. He is a good personality. This will be a fun, easy show. And he is such a draw. People will watch it. It's like, are you smarter than a fifth grader uh, type of questions? But you can call on a celebrity to help you answer it. So it's not hard questions. And you probably don't know it. But the celebrity that you're asking to help probably doesn't know it either. So it'll be like comedy and light and fun. I think that's a great move for him. Ugh, Kelly Clarkson's divorce continues to go on. And she is saying that her ex-husband... Um, 
she that he should give her back a couple million dollars because he did this deal for her, but he doesn't have the right license. Only like a licensed agent like a William Morris or something can do these deals where they take a commission. And him as her manager should have never taken a commission. It just goes on, but she's not giving up and she's fighting him. So also in divorce world, Jenna Jameson, who is like one of the biggest porn stars, she was like the first person to like make product and make money off product like, I don't know, like a mold of her vagina and stuff like that. Then she got married to Tito. She had two kids. Then she got married to someone else, had another kid. I don't know. Then she became a lesbian and married this other woman. And now the um, now that that other woman is filing for divorce um, because she said that I just thought this was kind of interesting. She's filing for divorce because she said she was supposed to be sober and she went to do an appearance or something and she was drinking champagne and people were sending the wife photos of Jenna drinking champagne. So she's like, so she did a TikTok and she's like, and that's what I was like, that's it. The requirement of staying with me is that you have to stay sober. And it was interesting because a lot of the comments in there were like, gosh, you know, you're going to leave your wife because she like fell off the wagon. Like, that's not for better, for worse. She's like, nope, that was the condition. Also, she says that Jenna said, oh, that she was financially stable. And then she found out that Jenna owes some $500,000 in like a tax debt. Also, um, Real Housewives of New Jersey is starting in May, and Andy had to go back and correct a statement that he made saying that the show couldn't be sustainable because we now know that Teresa and Melissa never film one scene together throughout the entire season. And they were like, what are you saying, that the show's not going to continue after this season? or what? And so he kind of tried to clear it up, like, that's not really what I meant. I think that I think it'll be good. I think it'll be interesting to see that. Um, and I think that's being authentic. Like if you had such a big beef with your sister, you wouldn't still be like hanging out and and doing scenes with them. So I think it's going to be it's like push comes to shove. What will happen? I think they always thought they would fold. What will happen the next season? Will it? You know, will Teresa just will it be the Teresa show or will it be the Melissa show or why not go another season with them not talking? Who the hell knows? Maybe something good or bad will happen in their lives that bring them together. Hopefully it'll be good. But I thought that was pretty interesting. And then, of course, uh, Coachella is again this weekend. We got Stagecoach coming up. I'm definitely going to Stagecoach. Um, so let me know if you are, too, because that could be fun to hang out. I'm very excited to go do that. And then, of course, I will be in Scottsdale with Brandy and Julie, Denver with Julie, all in May. Everything is at HeatherMcDonald.net. Very juicy Patreons coming up. You can also listen to that Kim Goldman um, couple-hour interview is on there under the Juicy Crimes triple scoop. It's all there, people, at HeatherMcDonald.net. Thank you so much.